Hey there, Lynn Allen here. Welcome to another draft site tip courtesy of Catalyst Magazine. All right, today I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into saving the files, file compatibility, and just what exactly happens when you share your draft site DWG files with somebody who has AutoCAD, because I wanna make sure that we're all on the same page here so that you feel nice and comfortable. So first of all, I talked to you before about this, of course, when you create a draft site file, you're creating a DWG file, just like you would inside of AutoCAD, right? You're gonna have, all your layers are gonna be fine, your blocks are gonna be fine, and, and vice versa if you bring a DWG file into AutoCAD, and I showed that to you in a previous tip. All right, but let's dive a little bit more into the file types, into saving what that really looks like, okay? So let me show you what I'm talking about. And this is important stuff. I'm gonna go into the save as, I'm in draft site right now, and I'm gonna go into save as, and let's just talk about all of these different file types in more detail than I did in the previous tip. All right, so first off, one of the great things about draft site is you can save back even further than you can inside of AutoCAD. I love that, I can save all the way back to R12. I'm not talking 2012. I'm talking release 12, that's right, early 90s, baby. Oh yeah, that is a dusty piece of software. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what computer that's running on, or I don't know who's still using R12 somewhere, I don't know, in Antarctica or something. Where are they? But nevertheless, if you run into somebody who has R12, release 12, you can save back and work with them, no problem. Good to know. And I always tell the story, I told this before too, about how when I was doing an AutoCAD webinar when I worked for Autodesk, that somebody came up to me and they said, hey, they had draft site in their office. This is one of the first times I'd ever heard of draft site. And I said, oh, well, what have you got draft site in your office for? And they said, because sometimes they needed to save back even further than AutoCAD would allow them to save back. So once again, draft site truly understands the data that's inside of a DWG file, and I think that's the key takeaway. Now, I want you to also see there's DXF files, drawing interchange format, and those files have been around since the very early days of CAD and were originally used so that you could manipulate the drawing data and so that you could exchange, like it sounds like, exchange the DWG data between different CAD programs. And uh, it's not used as much anymore, but you will see that there's two different types of DXF files. There's an ASCII DXF file and a binary DXF file. And all this stuff I'm telling you right now is also valid with, with AutoCAD, by the way. So uh, an ASCII DXF, no surprise, five times larger than a binary DXF, but you, it's text. You can go in and you can edit it. And in the early days, it was not uncommon. If you had a 3D drawing file and you wished it was 2D, you could go in and you could strip out that Z coordinate. And that was sometimes what people did. You could manipulate the data and then you could, you could export that DXF file and then you could import it back into AutoCAD, or you could import it back into DraftSite. Anyway, binary, on the other hand, so much faster, so much smaller. Maybe if you were doing like a, a mass printing plotting project or something like that, you could use these DXF files. So I'd like to point out also that inside a DraftSite, you can do ASCII or binary. Um, you can only do ASCII anymore inside of AutoCAD. Some of you might need a binary file. And then there's a D DWS, right? That's where your standards are, the, uh, your styles and your line types and, and layers and things like that. That's another lesson for another day. Your template files, you guys know what those are. Shape files. So this is something that AutoCAD also cannot do, but is very, very cool. So what is a shape file? A shape file is a, is a, a symbol. Um, like a block, but way harder to create than a block. You have to actually program it. So this would be a scenario where I would be able to draw this object and create a shape file out of it just by doing a save as a shape. What? It's totally undersold feature that I love. And you're like, well, what would I do with a shape file? I'll tell you what you do with a shape file. If you ever wanted to make a custom line type with a really cool symbol in it, you have to do that with shape files. And so I could create the cool symbol, create a shape file and put it in my custom line type. Oh, fabulous. Anyway, that's a pretty cool feature as well. I like it. 
It's like a top secret feature. Let's go over to AutoCAD and let's talk a little bit more because I want to share some stuff with you. All right, so let's uh, first off, let's do our save as. And as I mentioned uh, previously, like you'll just see that there just aren't nearly as many options when it comes to doing a save as. You can only save back to R14 for a DWG file. That's probably okay for, you know, 95% of the world. Um, but nevertheless, just pointing out that DraftSite has really worked hard to maintain the data integrity and to share, you know, make it easy for people to save back as far as they need to. There's the DWS, there's the DWT we talked about. There are DXFs, these are not binary, these are ASCII. And uh, there is, of course, no shape file. And, uh, but, but still, you know, for most of you, that's probably okay. This is what I really wanna show you because I'm gonna come clean with you. AutoCAD does not play well with other CAD programs. This is what you're about to see. If, okay, so you have your DWG file that you've been working on in DraftSite, and then you decide to share it with somebody who has AutoCAD, maybe somebody in your office, maybe a client, whatever the situation is, I gotta give you a heads up. I gotta come clean. I'm gonna open up uh, this drawing file. This was done inside a DraftSite. Look, Autodesk wants you to know that it was saved by an application that was not done by Autodesk. It's not done in AutoCAD. Now, I want you to know, it's not a draft site. You can open up a DWG from anywhere. You can open it up from AutoCAD. You can open it up, maybe you're using someone who uses BricsCAD, NanoCAD, whatever. They don't care if it's a DWG file. They're happy to use it. No problem. No warning statements. They play nicely with everybody. But Auto, Autodesk, AutoCAD, whatever, they just want you to know. They don't play as nicely. So there will be a warning message letting people know. They just need to continue opening the DWG file. It's fine. It's not evil. It's not going to hurt their... Nobody, no animals will be harmed. Uh, so, and, and it would be ideal if you are working with clients that are gonna be working with you, that you tell them to click on this, always open DWG file regardless of the origin. Then they don't have to ever see this dialogue ever again. But you can't make them do it. There's no way for you to get in ahead of time. Now I will tell you there are ways to get around this evil error message, but maybe that's uh, that's a way, that's a discussion for another time. And incidentally, if you open up a really old AutoCAD join, you get this message as well. And or if uh, you're working with a third-party app on top of AutoCAD, you could also get this message. So it doesn't necessarily mean that they were working that you were working with DraftSite or with BricsCAD or whatever the scenario was. So to some, I want, but I want you to know. So, uh, and also incidentally, the system always is a long time, right? Always open DWG files. I think it's always good to know what controls that. And there's a system variable called DWG check. Here's your little AutoCAD lesson as well. And that is a system variable that controls whether or not that dialog box, box pops up on the screen. So if you were a CAD manager, for example, and you knew that you were gonna be working with uh, you, you had some draft site users and you had some AutoCAD users, you could turn this off so nobody has to look at it. You could control it and or you can turn it back on with DWG check. All right, so there's your AutoCAD lesson. And you also learned a little bit about shape files. You learned about DXF files and you, and you more importantly, you learned that draft site does an amazing job with DWG data and that's the most important part. All right, but don't take my word for it. Download DraftSite and try it. Open up some drawing files, see how you feel. You'll see that your blocks and your layers and all the things that you know and love are gonna come across just fine. All right, download it for free, no credit card needed. I love that. And I'm gonna see you back here in a few weeks. Thank you so much for joining me.